Bye, Luca. That was Luca. What's happening, Booth Junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video. And today we're going to talk about reflection filters and portable vocal booths. And do they actually work? During the last video that we created, we created this, our beginner's vocal booth setup. And it consists of a microphone, a pop filter, and a portable recording device. And we created this in such a way that we could pick it up and take it with us to wherever it is in our house that we can record. And when we did that during our, our first beginner's setup, our first time setup, is we actually went over and stood right in front of that closet right there. And we used that as our makeshift vocal booth. And the reason we did that is because the, the, the clothing in that closet makes for a really nice absorbent uh, area that will absorb our voice so that it doesn't escape out into the room and create reverb and echoes and reflections that end up back in the microphone. What happens is when you talk, your voice goes out in all directions. It's primarily out front, but it does go out towards the back. And you'll see that the farther away I get from the microphone, the worse that room reverberation is. So to try and mitigate that, I have to get right up on this microphone to try and minimize that reflections. But even if I talk loudly and use you know, an energetic voice, you can still hear it getting into the microphone, even though I'm up close. Now, when we stood in front of the closet, it was fine. It made for actually a really good sound, but it's really not that convenient because you're sitting there facing into a closet like this close to your face, and that really doesn't work that well. So what some companies have created are these things. They're called reflection filters, and there are a bunch of different kinds out there. I think they range from probably on the low end, maybe 70 or 80 bucks up to this one. This one's made by SE, and this one was, I don't know, it's a few hundred bucks. This is actually a, a reasonably expensive piece of kit here, and you've also seen some people create their own. Maybe they've uh, used a uh, uh, a tin, uh, not a, a bin, a plastic bin around it, and they've, and they've put um, a foam in it to try and absorb sound that's going out past their past their microphone from getting around their room and back into the mic. Now what they're made out of is they're uh, they're stuffed or, or lined with this heavyweight thick felt and some have maybe acoustic foam in them depending on the different kinds. There's a lot of different form factors but the idea is is this surface this acoustic treatment will actually block reverb from getting into the mic and so the way it works is you put this in front of the microphone and there's a little notch here in the stand. You see me over right there, there's a little, uh, a little hole and this slides down in and then it locks, it, it locks and then it, it locks into place. But what you can see is, is it, it it really doesn't block your voice from going out beside you or out behind you. And it doesn't provide any protection from the most sensitive part of the mic. So the idea with these is it's going to try and prevent your voice from going out past the microphone and getting back in. And some people think it blocks sound from getting into the microphone this way, but this is the least sensitive side of the mic. And so sound really doesn't get into it anyway. And this is really not enough mass to block anything. So the question is, does this actually do anything? So if I raise my voice, can you still hear the room reflection? If I get right up on the mic and I talk in a loud voice, can you still hear the room reflection? And I think you can. It really doesn't make that big a difference. This is not the only, this here, this thing is not the only treatment that you can use for your microphone. It's a start, but without other ways of mitigating reflections from getting into the sensitive end of the microphone, these reflection filters, they don't really do a whole lot. And the next thing that's difficult about them is they're right in your face. So the closer you get to the microphone, when you're right up when you're right up on the microphone, you have this reflection filter like four inches from your face. And that can be very challenging from a copy perspective. So right now, 
I don't have a good place to put my copy. So I could try and hold it up, up here. I could try and hold it down here or off to the side, but that really doesn't make for a very optimal way of recording, and certainly not an optimal way to hold your head when you're doing your recording. It can constrict your throat or raise it up too high so you're facing away from the microphone. These prevent, uh, present actually a fairly challenging way to interact with the microphone and still have your copy. So would I suggest going out to buy one of these? Probably not. You might experiment with making one if you think you can make one for less than $20 or so. But really the thing that you want to do is manage all of the reflections in your room. And you can do that by adding additional padding, especially behind your microphone, so that any reverb that gets off the walls and off that back wall doesn't end up in the microphone. Remember, this is the less sensitive side of the mic and this is the most sensitive side of the mic. So you need to keep the sound, the unwanted sound out of the unwanted side of the microphone. So in some, I don't think these really do all that much. They don't really seem to affect the sound all that much without doing a lot of other treatment around your booth. So don't go out and spend several hundred dollars on a reflection filter until you know that that's the thing that's going to help. So I hope this helps. Don't go out and buy a reflection filter and you need it, but go out and record something amazing.